Hello, you are watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Over 160 killed in attacks in Sudan's Darfur. French President Emmanuel Macron wins election. Israeli court rejects petition in 2014 Gaza attack. And Nicaragua expels the Organization of American States. In our first story, at least 168 people have been killed following renewed attacks in Sudan's Darfur region. The General Coordination for Refugee and Displaced in Darfur has said that 98 others have been wounded. Violence broke out on April 21st after two people were killed by an assailant in Krenik. The violence then reached the Darfur's capital of Janina. The doctor at the city's main hospital told news agencies that armed groups had attacked wounded people in the facility. The Darfur Bar Association has estimated that 20,000 people have been displaced so far. The general coordination has accused the junta backed Janjaweed militias of being behind the attacks. It has said that the group has committed killings, torture, lootings and burnings in recent weeks. The Janjaweed was created under former dictator Omar al-Bashir. Its purpose was to suppress the armed rebellion by groups representing Darfur's marginalized pastoralist communities. According to the United Nations, 300,000 people were killed and 2.5 million were displaced. The civil war in Darfur formally ended with the Juba peace agreement in 2020. It was signed between the transitional military civilian government and several rebel groups. Many of the Janjaweed's members have been recruited in the brutal paramilitary rapid support forces. The RSF is led by Sudan's deputy junta leader, Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo. The Juba peace deal is considered to have failed in resolving the root causes of the Darfur conflict. Sudan's resistance forces have called for a review of the agreement as part of their broader socio-political project against the coup. We now move on to France, where President Emmanuel Macron has been re-elected to serve a second term. The incumbent faced off against far-right candidate Marine Le Pen in the runoff held on April 24th. Macron from the Republic and March party won 58.5% of the vote. Meanwhile, Le Pen from the National Rally secured 41.5%. The turnout on Sunday was below 72%, which is the lowest in a presidential runoff since 1969. Le Pen's party has historically promoted racist and anti-Muslim policies. She campaigned on upholding the quote-unquote traditional French identity and a hijab ban in public. According to reports, the far right made an unprecedented advance in this election. The new liberal policies pursued by Macron's government sparked mass unrest in France. These included the protests against pension and education reforms and notably the 2018 Yellow West protest. France also witnessed a series of mobilizations against the government's response to COVID-19. Macron's push towards authoritarian legislation, including the Global Security Bill, also drew widespread condemnation. Moreover, beyond the far right's explicit anti-Muslim rhetoric, Macron himself has been accused of systematically targeting Muslims. Reports have documented the surveillance and persecution of the community and its institutions under his government. However, differences within the left wing and the right and the threat of far-right extremism are believed to have helped Macron's position. Left forces warn that the president's second term will just be a continuation of his pro-business policies. The progressive La France Insoumise has urged its supporters to gear up for the legislative elections in June. We now move on to Israel where the Supreme Court has rejected a petition against the closing of an investigation into an airstrike on Gaza. On July 16, 2014, four Palestinian children were killed while they were playing on a beach. The victims, Ismail, Ayat, Zaharia and Muhammad, were members of the Bakr family. The killing took place during Israel's war on Gaza, dubbed quote-unquote Operation Protective Edge. The occupation forces launched the attack after sp spotting supposedly suspicious figures in the area. 
these figures were the four children aged between 9 and 11 years. In 2019, then Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit adopted the military advocate general's decision to close an inquiry into the killings. Mandelblit also rejected the Bakr family's appeal against it. In 2020, three organizations, Adala, al mizan and the Palestinian Center for Human Rights approached the court. The Bakr family argued that the investigative materials showed that the Israeli Air Force intentionally opened deadly fire at the children. They presented extensive evidence revealing the flaws and serious conflicts of interest in the inquiry. Despite this, the court ruled that it had no reason to intervene in the Attorney General's decision. It noted that the children had been playing near a shipping container which had reportedly been used to store weapons. Adala stated that the verdict relied on secret evidence seen only by the Supreme Court in the absence of the petitioner's lawyers. The Bakr family stated that the ruling showed how the entire justice system rallies to defend Israel's aggressions. And finally, Nicaragua has announced the expulsion of the Organization of American States, or the OAS, from the country. The Foreign Ministry also announced the closure of its offices on April 24th, saying that Nicaragua was nobody's colony. A statement denounced, and I quote, the shameful condition of one of the political instruments of intervention and domination of the U.S. government. In 2021, President Daniel Ortega's Sandinista government had announced their withdrawal from the OAS. Police were deployed to guard the organization's office in Managua on Sunday. The foreign ministry statement added that Nicaragua would no longer recognize this instrument of colonial administration. It noted the OAS's role in rights violations, invasions and coups, condemning it as an instrument of Yankee imperialism. Nicaragua has also ceased to be a part of all mechanisms and commissions of the OAS. The ministry statement also reiterated Nicaragua's respect and solidarity with the struggles of Cuba and Venezuela. President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela welcomed the decision, calling it, quote-unquote, firm, legitimate and righteous. He added that Nicaragua had acted out of the historic struggle in defense of sovereignty, independence and national dignity. Maduro urged all countries in the region to take part in the community of Latin American and Caribbean states or the CELAC. Nicaragua's decision was also supported by the Bolivarian Alliance for the People of Our America or ALBA TCP. It condemned the destabilization attempts and unilateral coercive measures imposed against the Ortega administration. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.